What's up everyone, Dablade here with another Hunter's Guide to Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. In this video, we're going to be bringing you one of the many endgame builds, this time for the bow. Endgame builds are highly customised mix sets that give you some of the best possible advantages when it comes to taking on monsters in the game. They are normally constructed from some of the highest level gear in the game, containing some of the rarest decorations, talismans and Krios crafting. Although with the Krios crafting, this has only been lightly touched upon within these builds as the RNG in getting the best possible outcome from the Krios crafting system is highly unlikely. Now as always if you find these builds helpful or informative please consider leaving a like on the video as well as subscribing to the channel as I try to bring you a variety of builds for a different variety of ways to play. Now when it comes to the bow it's an exceedingly strong DPS weapon that can definitely make use of elemental damage. As it's a ranged weapon you're able to keep your distance from monsters and is also highly maneuverable with the various evades it has available to it. But there is a downside to the bow, it's a very fragile weapon, meaning that even if you invest heavily in defensive skills, if you take a hit from a monster whilst using the bow, you're going to feel it. Regardless though, the bow is still an awesome DPS weapon to wield, and so with that I present to you the Elemental Endgame build. This build is a relatively safe build, as in it doesn't feature any suicide skills, but still allows us to deal awesome amounts of elemental damage to monsters. It's also highly interchangeable, so it can use any of the elements as well. So for this build, when it comes to the equipment, you'll need the Silver Soul Helm, the Archfiend Armor, Baolo, the Silver Soul Braces, Sinister Grudge Tassets, and the Kadachi Greaves X. As for your Petalace, even with these endgame builds, I say these are down to personal preference, if you want to go for something a little bit safer, go for the Absolute Petalace for that extra health. But you could also use things like the Demon Petalace if you want to go for some extra damage. As for the Talisman, everyone will have different Talismans. But if you can get a Talisman that has as much critical eye on it as possible, combined with the ability to get a point in Spread Up, then you should have a similar outcome to what is being shown in this build. Now, as for the bows, you'll want to go for bows that have Spread Arrows on them. Spread arrows currently are the most effective way to deal damage with the bows as they out DPS rapid fire bows and most piercing arrow bows as well. Whilst yes, piercing arrow bows can be effective against specific monsters, i.e. the long monsters, spread bows are normally what you want to go for. The only downside of using a spread bow is you have to be slightly closer to a monster. So with that in mind, the five bows you want to use are first, when using the fire element, you want to go for the Raffian. Queen's Rasphody. For the Ice Element, you want to go for the Baryoth Bow, which is the Amber Arc Belanga. For the Thunder Element, you want to go for the Kezu Bow, which is the Kezu Kesest. For the Water Bow, you want to go for the Chale War Bow, which is the Daimyo Hermital Bow. And then finally, for the Dragon Bow, you want to go for either the Gold Raffian Bow, which is Selene's Moonbroken, or you can also use the Thalstrax Bow, which is the Crimson Plume. Any of these bows will work with this build. You just have to change out a few decorations to match whatever element you're using. As for the Rampage skill, you want to go for Element Exploit. I would normally advise going for the Kushala de Orisol, but as this build already has high affinity, Element Exploit will just give us that little bit of extra damage. With the weapon Krios crafting as well with these bows, you'll first want to work on the Rampage slot upgrade so you can have that Element Exploit decoration. If not, after that, focus on increasing the elemental damage, and then after that, either the affinity or raw damage. Now when it comes to the decorations, you've got a few to play around with but a lot of these are mandatory. First of all, when it comes to the decorations in the weapon, this can differ depending on what bow you are using but for the most part you want to go for an expert jewel and I've also gone for a spirit bird core jewel as well. You'll then go for refresh jewels to max out stamina surge. You'll then want to go for blaze jewels as I'm using a fire bow in this example here to max out fire attack. Remember if you are using a different bow with a different element then you would replace those blaze jewels to match whatever new element you are using. I've then gone for spread jewels to max out spread up. Now if you did want to use bows that had rapid arrows or piercing arrows you would replace the spread decorations to either four shot or piercing decorations to give you either normal up or pierce up increasing the damage of those specific arrow types. Anyway we've then gone for critical draws to max out crit boost, a mighty bow draw to max out bow charge plus and then finally quick load draws to get at least two points in reload speed. 
So if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build with a raw attack of 375 with a fire rating of 53. Remember, if you're using a different bow with a different element, then this rating can differ, but it will still be fairly substantial. You also have at least 40% base affinity. This could be higher with some bows as well if you are using different elements, which can easily be 90% when you take into account weakness exploit. This is the main reason we haven't gone for the Dora Soul decoration and instead gone for the element exploit decoration. You also have an okay defense of 693. That is strong against fire, but unfortunately weak to the other elements. But this may change depending on the Krios crafting you have available to you. As for the switch skills, I say they're generally down to personal preference, but I will recommend going for the dodge bolt. That allows you to dodge and counter monster attacks at the same time. This can help with our survivability, as it allows you to parry attacks basically. But with the switch skills, it is advisable to have similar setups on both the red and blue scrolls as we have a skill that changes things depending on which scroll we are using but we'll talk about that in a moment. So as for the skills, first of all you'll have critical eye at level 7 increasing the base affinity of this build nice and simple. You'll then have fire attack at level 5 increasing the fire damage of this build. Of course if you were using a different weapon with a different element you would have different jewels and that would give us the equivalent elemental attack. So if we were using an ice bow we would have frost jewels thus giving us ice attack at level 5 increasing the damage of that element. Anyway, you'll then have critical boost at level 3, increasing the damage of our attacks whenever they crit a monster, but this only applies to the raw portion of an attack, not the elemental portion. You'll then have weakness exploit at level 3, increasing our affinity by up to 50% whenever we're attacking monster weak points. This is definitely easy with the bow, as we can pinpoint our shots, so long as monsters have good hit zones. You'll then have critical element at level 3, Critical Element is a skill that increases the elemental damage of our attacks when they crit a monster. You'll then have Constitution at level 3, which reduces our stamina depletion when we're evading and doing other actions. This is definitely a quality of life skill that the bow desires, as the bow is a stamina based weapon, which means that when we dodge, evade and fire the bow, we will be using stamina. Constitution reduces the cost of actions with the bow basically. You'll then have Stamina Surge at level 3, which increases how quickly we regain our stamina. You'll then have Spread Up at level 3, increasing the damage of Spread Arrow types. Remember, like I said, if you were using a Pierce or Rapid Fire bow, you'd replace that to match whatever new arrow type you were using on the bow. But as I mentioned, Spread Arrows seem to be more favourable when it comes to dealing damage in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Anyway, you'll then have Windproof at level 3, which negates all wind pressure against the Hunter. You'll then have Reload Speed at level 2, which allows us to automatically load bow coatings. This is a really nice quality of life skill to have for the bow, but it is not essential, so if you wanted to drop points somewhere, the quick load jaws could be dropped if you wanted to, especially if you are using a bow that only has access to a few coatings. Anyway, you'll then have Resentment at level 1, which is a byproduct of the armor we're wearing. Resentment is a skill that activates whenever we have a portion of red health on our health bar. When this happens, it will increase our raw attack. You'll then have Bow Charge Plus at level 1, an essential skill for the bow, a must have, as it allows us to increase the maximum bow charge level by 1. When you're looking at bows, you can sometimes see that the bottom arrow is greyed out. Basically, taking Bow Charge Plus will allow us to unlock this and allow us to deal maximum damage with our arrows when they're fully charged up. You'll then have Fortify at level 1, this is kind of an optional skill and a result of our Krios crafting. Basically, this increases our attack and defense every time we fall in battle and can be applied twice to a hunter during any single hunt. You'll then have Mail of Hellfire, which is a skill that decreases our defense but increases our attack. Now this works in two ways. When you're using the red scroll, so the red orangey looking switch skill loadout, our defense will go down and our raw attack will go up. But when we're using the blue scroll, our resistances, our elemental resistances will go down, but our elemental attack will go up. So it's a nice bonus to our DPS, but you have to be aware of this as it does reduce our survivability a little bit. You'll then have Coalescence at level 1, which is a skill that whenever we remove an abnormal status or blight from our hunter, we'll gain increased attack, elemental attack, and status buildup. You'll then have Redirection at level 1, this is kind of a byproduct of the Krios crafting. When we perform a perfectly timed skill swap, just as a monster is attacking us, it will reduce the damage and negate the damage reaction as well. Next up is Spirit Bird Call, which is a quality of life skill that I personally always like to use, unless I'm fighting in arena style areas, which basically we receive the effects of a random Spirit Bird at fixed intervals during quests. So we don't always have to go out of our way to hunt down Spirit Birds, as this will call them to us. Anyway, next up is Blade Scale Hone, which when dodge rolling to evade an attack or counter an attack with the dodge bolt, 
we will give a temporary boost to our close range coatings. So basically when we do a perfectly timed dodge, 50% of the time it will increase the damage of our close range coatings indicated by a message on the right of our screen. Our close range coatings will also light up orange, indicating they've received the bonus. In a way this increases their damage and makes them the equivalent of power coatings in terms of damage I believe. Anyway, next up is Element Exploit at level 1. It would have been nice to get this higher, but the level 1 buff is substantial enough. This increases elemental damage when attacking monster body parts that are highly susceptible to elemental damage. Which means that if we're attacking a monster body part that has an elemental rating of 25 or above, Element Exploit will take effect, increasing the elemental damage against that specific monster part. So this makes fighting monsters who are highly susceptible to elemental damage very weak against this skill. And then finally you have Chain Crit at level 1. Chain Crit is a nice skill that again would have been nice to have more points in but having at least one point in it is quite substantial. Basically continuously landing hits gradually increase the attack and elemental attack of our weapon. And as the bow is all about landing constant attacks on monsters this works exceedingly well. Now before we wrap things up, a quick note on the Krios Crafting of this build. There are a few skills here that have been provided to us through Krios Crafting, but none of them are super substantial in all honesty, and most of them can be obtained by simply increasing or obtaining decoration slots or decoration upgrades via the Krios Crafting. So, as you can see here, we've got a point in the Fortify skill as well as the Stamina Surge skill. To be honest, having a point in Stamina Surge is very valuable, but this can also be obtained if you were to get a tier 2 decoration slot when performing the Krios crafting. On the Archfiend armor you can see I've got a decoration slot increase, same with the silver soul braces as well as the sinister grudge tacits. This has also got the redirection skill but this is not essential for this build. And then finally for the Katashi Greaves I got a point in the blade scale hone skill but again you could get a decoration slot upgrade which would also allow you to take that skill via decorations if you wanted to. So there we have it, that is the elemental build that I like to use for the bow. Now every build out there has various pros and cons. As I always say, no build is absolutely perfect, even the end game ones come with various positives and negatives. When it comes to the elemental bow build, its biggest pro is its damage output. Able to dish out strong elemental and raw damage, it's able to bring down monsters quickly so long as you're taking into account their elemental weaknesses. On top of that, this build also has decent stamina management. Having at least 3 points in constitution combined with maximum stamina surge will definitely help our stamina management when we're on a hunt. On top of that if we were to take the Dango Fighter, food buff as well as use our dash juice, our stamina management will be even better. And then finally this bow is interchangeable with the other elements in the game. There is a bow for each of the elements out there so it's highly interchangeable to best combat what you're fighting. But of course there are cons. One of the biggest cons which I think is going to be on almost every bow build is unfortunately this is a fragile build, we don't really have defensive skills, as even with defensive skills if we take a hit from a monster we definitely feel it. The best defense is keeping at range and using the dodge bolt to counter attacks. And the other con is unfortunately not all the bows I recommended are built equally, some have more decoration slots than others meaning that some of the bows may drop points here and there. But regardless of the cons, this is still an exceedingly fun build to use for the bow. And whilst there is a stronger bow build out there, this one doesn't have the drawbacks that that one does, i.e. it doesn't drain your health and potentially kill you. This is still able to provide you a ton of damage output, so long as you're taking into account a monster's elemental weakness, and whilst you may have to heal after taking a hit, it is unlikely that you'll be one shot with this build. And thus, anyone looking for a non-suicide DPS build, for the bow, I'd recommend this one. But what are your thoughts? Please leave a comment down below, and until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you my endgame elemental bow build for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.